I'm gonna give some tips and tricks to show you how walking field trips can be made really easy when you teach so many classes in the school. Hi, I'm Jennifer Hamilton and I'm an art teacher here in Michigan. I teach young fives through fifth grade. I take third and fourth graders every year on these walking field trips. It's so easy and fun and it's great to get out of the school and explore businesses and murals in your area. Please make sure to like and subscribe to The Art of Ed to see lots of videos just like this one. Each year I take my students in third grade to a local business. This year we're visiting a camera shop. The camera shop has displays of very old cameras, which the students were super interested in. The shop also has a lot of new digital equipment. We even got to witness a customer buying a digital camera and an associate discussing with him all of the fancy features in the camera. The students were able to see pictures get printed and take home a souvenir photograph of the class after the field trip. My field trips center around going to art related places in my community. We do two walking field trips a year. Fourth grade, we always go to visit murals that are located on the busy street by our school. It's a quick 15 minute walk there and back. We can see three murals, whether we go one way down the busy street or the other. I'm lucky that my school has a Google form for all field trips. This includes bus field trips and walking field trips, stay over camp field trips. So I'm working on making sure that all of the instructions, field trip summaries, the student rosters, permission slips are all loaded up. I will send it over to the administration building and my field trip will be approved or denied. Okay, so my field trips were just approved by my principal and now I can go ahead and start making copies of the field trip permission slips. I make sure that the permission slips are due about a week before the walking field trip. The other thing I've made sure to to do is to key in the secretaries by also sending them a copy of the note I sent to the parents and the permission slip. The note that I sent to the parents has all the different dates that the walking field trips are going to happen. I only take one class at a time on walking field trips. So if there are three classes in that grade level, then we go on three different dates on that field trip. If you're taking an entire grade level on a walking field trip, you're going to get a lot of permission slips. It's going to be hard to keep track of them all. So I'm going to share how I do it in my room. So if you're going on a walking field trip with me, you're going to get a two-sided paper. The front side is going to be a letter from me explaining where we're going, what we're doing, the days we're going, the times we're leaving, the times we'll be back, and some contact info for me. At the top is our school letterhead so that they know this is official letter from the school. All of this gets approved by the administration at our school before it ever goes home to family. The back of this letter is the actual permission slip. So here's the permission slip. This tells parents where we're going. They can check off the box if they're allowed to attend or not attend. And it also gives a space for the parent or guardian to give us their name and contact information should anything go wrong. And then we have a blurb about if there is an emergency or a medical situation with the student, allergies, medication, doctor's phone number and name and a preferred hospital. The the parent or guardian signs the paperwork, gives us the date and phone number. I make sure that at the very top in bold, it has the due date that this needs to come back to me by. I will accept these permission slips up until the very moment we leave. I put a due date on here so that I can make sure and calculate who hasn't turned one in so I can start making physical phone calls ahead of time for any students that don't have a permission slip. If there is an assigned permission slip, that student is actually not allowed to go on a field trip per our district rules. At the very end, I leave my classroom phone number and my email so that they can get a hold of me for whatever reason that they need to. And then I let parents know thank you for your support because I know as a specials teacher, it is extra work for everyone for us to go on a field trip or to do anything special in this class. So I want to let them know always how much I appreciate their support. So I'm off to make a lot of copies to make sure that they go in the teacher's mailbox by the end of today. For every 
every class going on the walking field trip, I print out a blank class list that I print off of our grade book. So here's what one looks like. This is the teacher's name. It has also our school information. This is all of the students that belong in this class. What I'll do is on one of these, I'll put permission slip. And then I will check off as I receive permission slips from this classroom. This is paper clipped together and I'll also paper clip all of the permission slips behind this. And then this packet goes with me in my backpack while we're gone on the walking field trip. So I have everybody's information with me while we're gone. One of the other really important things to think about when you're setting up a walking field trip is you want to inform all special education teachers. Some students will need assistance or a paraprofessional and you want to make sure you let them know right away so that they can set up all of the supports that student needs to be successful. A great tip I have for planning and organizing field trips in the art room because it is so many classes and so many people is that I have one file folder on my drive that says field trips and then I divide every year my walking field trips into yearly folders. If I'm struggling to think oh what did we do last year I can jump right back into last year's folder pull up my paperwork and I can kind of copy and paste from there making the work easier and less hard on myself. The other thing I want to mention is Usually the day before the field trip, I send an email to the school secretary and I CC the principal reminding them of the walking field trip, what times will be out, and if they should expect any chaperones in the building who've signed up to help us with the field trip. When you send that email, make sure to ask for any medications for any students who might need that kind of help while you're out of the building. Today, is our first walking field trip. So I'm going to go over what I bring in my backpack while we're gone. Today it might rain, but I'm gonna bring an umbrella. I'm bringing my sunnies because, you know, it's the Midwest, you never know. My school keys, a uh, first aid kit, all the permission slips that the parent signed with their phone numbers and emergency contact info on, plus the entire class roster of the class I'm taking. It is a bit chilly outside right now, so I'm bringing a hat. I'll be wearing this while we're on our field trip. This is a tip for teachers for when you get back. I brought a brush to redo my hair today just because I know I'm gonna be a mess. I also brought my winter coat today. We're in the low 50s this morning, so I wanna make sure I stay warm. And I'm wearing tennis shoes. Make sure to wear something that's comfortable to walk in and that your feet won't ache after the school day. While we're waiting, we're gonna go over the rules of walking. Number one, no running. Number two, you are walking on sidewalks only. Number three, you are not allowed to cross a street without an adult. We're gonna be respectful of other people's property, okay? And these are people's houses and they live there, so there will be no screaming and being wild. We're just taking a nice walk down the street. We're going straight. We gotta wait for the walking guy. Okay, let's go. Greg Bugala is the mural artist. He is a local working artist. He has several murals in cities around our town. This is a style of a lot of mural artists that they take on when painting their murals because painting tiny details this big is really, really hard. I really want my students to experience art outside of the classroom, which is why I find these walking field trips so important. It gets us talking about art and going to new places together instead of always being in the classroom when we do this. One thing I hope my students take away from my class is that we can find art anywhere. We don't have to go to an art museum. We don't have to be in school. We don't have to even seek it out. We could be walking or going into a business and we can find art in our daily lives. Go straight to class. Go straight to class. The last thing I want to mention is make sure you have a backup plan if you don't show up to the school when the class ends. Make sure you let that other classroom teacher know you might be a little bit late and set up a contingency plan so they get their entire planning period. Usually I'll say, 
hey, don't show up for about 10 minutes after your special starts, and then you can pick up your kids 10 minutes late. That way it gives me a little bit of a buffer so that nobody's waiting for me in the hallway and nobody's frustrated because they're losing time during their planning period. And a couple of things that I didn't mention is, number one, make sure you bring a charged cell phone. That way in case the office needs to get a hold of you or you have an emergency, you have a way of calling and contacting other people while you're outside of the school. We had the rainiest of all rainy field trips just now. Field trip in the rain today. This is our first field trip in the rain. Raindrops keep falling on my head. No, nobody? When I got back, I immediately had to start teaching the next class. So I've had my rain boots on for like two hours. So I am putting my tennis shoes back on. During this field trip, students were collecting leaves for a class that I have later that's going to be using them for their projects. So that was super fun. It was a hunt to find the biggest leaves and also super helpful for me. Thanks for watching my video on how to do a walking field trip with your students in the art room. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found some great tips and tricks and try a walking field trip with your students. If you haven't already, please make sure that you like this video and you subscribe to the Art of Ed to receive more videos like this. Thanks for watching.